Now, all 15 of these ways come from studying false teachers and preachers in the Bible. Now, Balaam is a man from the fourth book in the Bible, the book of Numbers. And ultimately, Balaam was a false prophet, ultimately. And the key principle I want you to understand from this particular scenario is false prophets and teachers, when you look at what they do, they are willing to even sell out and to do evil things, clear evil things, all in the name of money so the fact of the matter is if you are looking at a certain preacher or a certain teacher right now prophet apostle evangelist whatever it is and you can see clearly they are swayed by money they will basically take a, a paycheck from one person or a paycheck from another person in order or in return for doing something clearly evil that is a clear sign that that person may be a false prophet balaam was willing to basically curse god's souls on people the israelites in return for money he tried to bring up this false facade and we'll talk about that later on in today's video about how he's only interested in doing what god says but when push came to shove he was willing to do what it took to basically get the israelites to sin which was a clear sign because he was swayed easily by money example number two comes from the very next book after numbers where balaam is and that's the book of deuteronomy book number five in the bible and this is ultimately where god is telling his people one way to spot a false prophet is ultimately by that false prophet basically naming the name of another god if they are not teaching you to turn back or focus on jesus as your lord and savior ultimately and they're telling you to go and serve or worship another god the fact of the matter is there are clearly religions today you've got like muslims buddhists sikhs etc who are clearly telling you to go and serve another god or another set of ideas or another religion clearly but it gets a bit more tricky when you're dealing with people that are professed to be Christians, but are telling you to basically do things that the God of the Bible does not initiate or teach. That is when you'll see clearly that these people that are telling you, we want to do all of these things, but we want to do it in the name of another God. That is when you can see clearly that this person is a false prophet. Now we move six books forward in the Bible. We're going to the 11th book in the Bible, which is from the book of First Kings. And ultimately, the third piece of insights that you get in regards to identifying a false prophet is if they are just telling you everything you want to hear. This is from a guy named Zedekiah. Now, Zedekiah is the one highlighted out of about 400 false prophets. But ultimately, what happens in this scenario in First Kings is the king is basically gathering all of the prophets to basically come and give him advice now the king of israel here in question clearly from when you read the text was only interested in hearing what he wanted to hear and he basically gathered about 400 prophets ultimately who were turned into his yes men what did they start doing well ultimately they just told the king look go up and go to battle because the lord is going to give you the victory in the battle the person i mentioned at the start which was the guy named zedekiah who was at the umbrella of all of these people if someone is only telling you things that you want to hear beware because ultimately that is a clear sign in a lot of ways that that person is a false teacher or a false prophet because they're not interested in truth they're only interested in what actually you want to hear and in contrast to that to wrap up that story in the bible god actually sends a real man of god to basically give him the message and what do you think he listens to the 400 false prophets or the one prophet that god had actually sent to him i'm pretty sure you know the answer right now moving on to the full sign this ultimately comes from the old testament the book of jeremiah and ultimately any prophet or false teacher who's basically just speaking not from god but ultimately speaking things from their own visions or from their own dreams a clear sign of a false prophet now you may ask yourself well how can i understand or determine how someone is just basically speaking from their own visions and their own dreams opposed to what god is actually saying well a clear example is ultimately just reading through different parts of the bible generally if you're dealing with a false prophet a lot of those so-called visions and so-called dreams will not line up with what the bible says this is why it's very easy to identify this even though you may think it may be difficult at the start why because many false prophets and false teachers are going to be telling you things that they want to do many of these things don't line up with the bible so it's clear when you start examining what they say their dream was or what they say their vision is and when we can't see it clearly in the scripture we know that's another example another telltale sign that this person is most likely engaging in some sort of false teaching or some sort of false prophecy in the book of jeremiah we now move on to the fifth one and this is ultimately when these false ministers ultimately who say they serve you when they really don't will ultimately cause you to suffer loss because of what they're actually telling you to do you will have people that will basically turn around and say look you need to do this and ultimately these things that they're telling you to do are things that ultimately cause you to lose key spiritual relationships relationships that 
are helping you build your faith and grow in your Bible reading and your prayer life and just overall becoming a more mature Christian. They'll cause you to damage and tarnish those relationships and ultimately try and strengthen the relationships you have with them. So ultimately you now become dependent on these people and they're ultimately going to continue to lead you down a fool's path. Ultimately you will suffer loss in many ways because they will teach you to do many unbiblical practices which will ultimately get you into a position where you're actually regretting it in the long run. The wise thing to do would just be to keep your support network of people that you know are clearly devoted to serving the God of the Bible and are keeping you and encouraging you in the right ways. Now if you don't have that sort of network then ultimately your job is to find people that you know are truly devoted to serving the king and ultimately being faithful to his word the bible distance yourself if possible from these kind of people who are basically trying to get you away from god away from the bible and trying to get you to focus in on them specifically as individuals to ultimately worship them number six and we'll stay in jeremiah some of these people will even be bold enough to basically speak in the name of the lord we mentioned previously right in number two you've got false prophets that will basically say look let's go and serve another god this god is basically telling me xyz and you clearly see that that's a false teacher then you'll have people that will say look i serve the same god as you i believe and trust in the same god as you the god in the bible that's who i serve but then they'll still tell you to do false things that you can't find in the bible false things that are not biblical and they are ultimately trying to get you again to serve them specifically don't get caught up thinking just because they named the name of god or they named the name jesus or anything like that this means they're doing the right thing it doesn't so make sure you don't fall for those tricks number seven is two books over from jeremiah and now we're talking about the book of ezekiel and ultimately this is where these false teachers and false prophets will tell you the complete opposite of what is actually the truth in this particular example you're going to see people that were telling people telling the israelites that peace was coming when in fact the opposite was coming which was judgment this goes back to what we talked about previously when we was focusing on the book of first kings and Zedekiah and the group of 400 false prophets who ultimately were just telling the king of Israel what he wanted to hear and this is serious because if it's the complete opposite of what God has actually said is going to happen or is intending to happen you know how detrimental this can actually be so when someone says something to you you have to be cautious and weary and understand that what that person may be saying may be the complete opposite of what God's actually intending and if it's the complete opposite of what God's actually intending you run the risk of falling into deep deep problems let's continue and go on to number eight number eight is also in the book of ezekiel and this is where you can see a false teacher or a false prophet a mile away because they literally take your resources which are supposed to help you and they ultimately take it for themselves a great example of this is something like giving financially right there's nothing inherently wrong with giving or supporting a ministry by giving to a ministry that also helps others ultimately benefit themselves who are in need but the fact of the matter is this it's not just about money either way it can be time it can be effort it can be energy resources and so many different things so if they're basically just taking your time and basically serving themselves or they're taking your resources your money your energy your effort to serve them you can clearly see it's a false teacher or a false prophet if they are elevating up and people are not elevating up with them that is most likely a clear sign not always a clear sign but something that showcases that they are just serving themselves when they should actually be serving you now number nine is a powerful one and this is basically where these false individuals will tell people who are basically speaking the truth to not speak the truth one reason why anyway is because it's highlighting the false individuals this comes from the 30th book in the bible a small book called the book of amos and in the book of amos this individual a false priest basically by the name of amaziah is telling amos Amos and condemning Amos from basically speaking the truth and encouraging him saying Amos don't prophesy the truth why because the truth was obviously about oncoming judgment for the Israelites and why they should change Amos the prophet basically says look I didn't set out to be a prophet I was basically doing my own thing working as a shepherd ultimately God said go and speak to the people so if you find someone who's basically saying look this individual who you know is teaching clear biblical doctrine that person should stop speaking that may be a clear sign that you're dealing with a false teacher because they do not want all of this true light shined on their darkness and their false activities. Let's move on to 
number 10. Now, number 10 is a really interesting one. And this is when false prophets, false teachers, false priests, false individuals ultimately will try and appeal to some sort of higher authority or some sort of higher example or revelation. We see this going back to the book of First Kings. And this is our prime example which ultimately cost a man of God his life. Why? Because the man of God was told by God to basically go and preach judgment that was coming on a specific city named Bethel, which means the house of God, interesting enough. And God has said to the man of God, when you go to preach your message, return and do not stop and go into anybody's house. And the old prophet turns around and says, look, I saw a vision or I saw a message from an angel and they told me that you should come into my house. Instead of listening to what God said clearly to him, he listened to this old false prophet who was basically appealing to this miraculous angel message who basically said, yep, yeah, yeah, the angel said, come and join me. And he basically went into the old prophet's house. Ultimately, because of this, when he basically went on his journey home, he was eaten by a lion. If someone comes along and says, look, an angel said that you should do this false thing that goes against God's word. You should know clearly that God has actually said, do this. And if the angel or some sort of higher authority that the person is appealing to is saying, do this, you know clearly that that is a false prophet, a false teacher, a false priest, a false individual. 11 is a very vital one, and I need you to really pay close attention here. 11 is about false prophets, false teachers, false individuals who are willing to basically die for the courts. We're sticking in First Kings again, and here we have a clear example where the one man of God in this scenario, a man by the name of Elijah. Elijah was one of the most famous prophets from the Old Testament who served God. He went up toe to toe with about 450 false prophets at least who were basically getting the Israelites to serve false gods. The reason I bring this up and this is really significant is because they were publicly challenged by Elijah to have a public observation of whose God was true and they didn't say no in this scenario they didn't try and worm their way out of it they basically turned around and said okay cool elijah was proven to be a follower of the true god and they were ultimately proven to be false and at the end of this they were ultimately put to death but the point is they were willing to go into a public example a public observation a public test even if it meant they were willing to die. So some people facing these people may not be bold enough to actually come out. So just because someone says confidently, look, let's have a public dialogue or let's have a public example or observation for the people, that doesn't mean anything. You've got people that are willing to die even though they know what they're doing is actually false. Number 12, let's move to the New Testament. And this is ultimately how these false individuals, these false prophets, these false teachers, these false apostles, false evangelists, whatever they are, will basically come to you in a gentle demeanor, but really inside they are deadly, really deadly. This is from Matthew's gospel account where Jesus himself is telling you, look, beware of these false people, these false teachers, because they come to you gently looking like they are literally sheep, which is a gentle animal, but inwardly, secretly, they are false ravening wolves who basically want to destroy you and kill you. We just talked about the man of God previously from 1 Kings who ultimately lost his life because of one false prophet. This is more of the same of what Jesus is talking about here in the New Testament where he's literally getting you to understand, beware, because this is a scenario which is a matter of life and a matter of death. If you wind up under the wrong kind of person, just understand this could be an inwardly deadly wolf is trying to kill you so pay close attention to the things i'm talking about in today's video now number 13 is from the fifth book of the new testament where matthew was obviously from the first book in the new testament and what we're talking about now are people false people that are willing to turn you away from the thing you believe in your faith in jesus the fact of the matter is you've got false individuals like elimus who are basically trying to get you to basically lose your faith that's their only goal so think about this there are people like i said who are listening to what you are saying are trying to convince you of things which ultimately their end goal is to basically get you away from jesus now number 14 is a really powerful one it's from one of the last books in the bible the epistle by peter in second peter and he's basically highlighting and saying look these false prophets these false teachers these false individuals will try and subtly deceivingly smuggle in to the church false teachings false practices false beliefs this is another reason why you need to be very alert and mindful and thinking about the things that you're actually listening to because not everyone's going to be outright with it we talked about 
other religions previously in the video you've got muslims you've got Sikhs, you've got buddhists you believe in a completely different thing and they may be trying to convert you to that religion which is obviously opposed to what the bible says but you have and i mentioned this earlier on you've got people that may even be willing to speak in the name of the lord and ultimately you have to understand that just because they're speaking in the name of the lord falsely they will try and smuggle in little bits of false doctrine to try and get you away from what the bible actually says pay attention and be aware Number 15 is about the most vital thing for you and your Christian faith. And this is where you have forced individuals who are basically deny Jesus actually came and died on the cross to save you and to save me and to save all of the world, the whole of mankind. This is because in the epistle of John, 1 John by John the disciple of Jesus, John is basically talking about false prophet false individuals who are basically being influenced controlled by false spirits wicked spirits who are ultimately trying to get you to believe that jesus did not come physically to die on the cross to save you now ultimately as a christian this is the most important thing to our faith if jesus didn't die on the cross for us for you and for me then as paul says in corinthians our whole belief is ultimately in vain the enemy knows this and this is ultimately why he wants you to believe that jesus didn't die on the cross for your sins and this is a really vital one because like I said, any false individual who's basically telling you that Jesus did not come in the flesh and die for your sins is a clear red flag that they are a false prophet. If you follow the 15 warnings I gave you in today's video, it will be much more easier for you to identify and spot these false prophets and false teachers. I know it may be heartbreaking and stressful at times, but this is the one thing I recommend you never do in these situations.